Wheelies are awesome. They're one of the most exciting aspects of motorcycling. But what actually causes a bike's front wheel to defy gravity and leave the security of the ground? And why are some bikes easy to wheelie while others aren't? Let's open up the shop manual, find out. This episode of the Shop Manual is brought to you by Kershaw, my go-to unboxing knife and a tool I carry with me everywhere. Get 25% off your order with discount code SHOPMANUAL25. Intuitively, we know that bikes wheelie as the result of hard acceleration or someone popping the clutch and yanking up on the bars. But there's a lot more going on than just that. Like, why does the earth spin on an axis and how do birds fly kind of more? Is this a complicated topic? You have to form a matrix of non-linear ordinary differential equations, and you need to propagate that through time with an integrate, like a numerical integration method. It is a complex thing. It really is. Uh, there's there's a lot of different. Uh, there's linear forces. There's rotational forces. At a particular instant, what is the acceleration of your rear wheel? At a particular instant, what is the location of the rider on the motorcycle? What is the rider doing? And then you would have to be evaluating each of those instants one at a time. Basically, from a physical perspective, the dynamics of a motorcycle wheeling are massively complicated, highly variable, and can only accurately be described with stuff that looks like this. So, Rather than blow a fuse in your brains and mine, we have simplified some key concepts to help you understand what's going on during one of motorcycling's most hallowed maneuvers. Remember Sir Isaac Newton? He's the 17th century scientist with wild Van Halen hair that came up with laws describing the relationship between the motion of an object and the forces acting on it. Newton's first law is all about inertia, which is an object's resistance to changes in direction and speed. A good example of inertia at work is the trick where someone pulls a tablecloth out from under dishes. Except, it's not a trick. It's just physics. The items have enough inertia to resist the friction of the moving tablecloth, so they stay put instead of getting yanked off the table. A similar thing happens when you pin the throttle on a powerful motorcycle. The rear wheel is pushing the bike forward, but the inertia of the bike's mass makes it want to lag behind. And because the tire is applying driving force at a point below the bike's center of mass, the epicenter of its inertia, the motorcycle wants to rotate up and around the rear wheel. To illustrate the point, here's an experiment similar to the tablecloth trick, except we've got a model motorcycle with its rear tire fixed to the board. If I yank the board forward like we did with the tablecloth, the bike wheelies. There's no power being applied by the rear tire. The motorcycle only rears up because the bike's mass resists following the motion of the rear wheel due to the effect of inertia. Pretty wild, right? Inertia is a powerful force, but it's just one of many overlapping reasons that bikes wheelie. Next up, another one of Newton's laws. Newton's third law states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's true in cases of linear motion, like bouncing a ball against the ground or a rocket blasting off into space, but it also holds true for angular motion, as in situations where there's a twisting force or torque. Take, for example, opening a jar of one of my favorite snacks, spicy pickles. My right hand is applying a torque to the lid, and as per Newton's third law, my left hand is applying an equivalent reaction torque to the jar to keep it from turning. At some point, I will apply enough torque to overcome the friction of the threads, and the lid will spin off. Transfer that understanding to a motorcycle, where the lid is the rear wheel and the jar is the chassis. As the rear wheel rotates forward with a given torque, there's an equivalent backward reaction torque on the frame that will cause it to want to pitch up. Just as the jar lid twists off once you overcome the friction of the threads, once the torque of the rear wheel exceeds that of gravity acting on the bike's center of mass over its distance from the rear axle, the front wheel will begin to leave the ground. And voila, you've got a wheelie. And while wheelies look cool and are associated with power and speed, they actually represent the limit of how hard a motorcycle can accelerate. Valentino Rossi once said, wheelies are uh, the enemy. He meant in terms of acceleration, and he's not wrong. 
Not only does a wheelie represent wasted power, because torque is being used to raise the front wheel rather than drive the bike forward, wheelies also cause the bike's center of gravity to rise, which further reduces how hard the bike can accelerate because, well, it'll wheelie more. Maximum acceleration is actually attained when the front wheel just barely skims the pavement, which is exactly what you see in top-level racing. On the flip side, when someone is riding a proper center of gravity over the rear axle balance point wheelie, forward acceleration is close to zero. In the big picture, inertia and reaction torque are just two pieces of a Newtonian puzzle that explains why bikes wheelie. Other factors that will make a wheelie more or less likely include engine character, obviously more horsepower is gonna help, tire grip, since the rear might slip instead of hook up, whether you're riding uphill or downhill, aerodynamics, and even how stiff or soft the suspension is, since that affects weight transfer in a big way. In the end, I think the easiest variables to understand are power, weight, wheelbase, and the location of the center of gravity. In general, taller, lighter, more powerful, short wheelbase bikes are going to lift the front wheel more readily, whereas longer, heavier, lower motorcycles require far more torque to wheelie. Likewise, it's easier to wheelie at low speeds and in low gears because rear wheel torque, and thus reaction torque, is stronger. As for why wheelies are so much fun and make us so happy, well, I think further research is needed.